welcome to Sunday services at Enon United Methodist Church on this beautiful Epiphany Sunday. This morning we'll be um, bringing in the new year with a Wesley Covenant service with a little bit of light coming in to the darkness. I look forward to sharing this time with you. Please join me in our call to worship. Our bulletin is found at enonumc.org. There on the same page with the link to the video, you'll find the bulletin. A new day has dawned, a new year begun. O oh Lord, call us so we may hear your voice. The world turns to hopes and dreams of the future. O oh Lord, keep us in your ways and on your path. We enter this new year with hope and excitement. O oh Lord, remind us that you lead us. O oh Lord, guide us as we look to you and worship you. Lord Jesus, we come. Our scripture for this first Sunday of 2021 comes from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 14. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, just as he chose us in Christ before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He destined us for adoption as his children through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will. To the praise of his glorious grace, that he freely bestowed on us in the Beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace, that he lavished on us with all wisdom and insight. He has made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure that he set forth in Christ. As a plan for the fullness of time to gather up all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him, you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. And now from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 9 and 10 through 18. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. <coughs> He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. <coughs> there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. 
No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. And now, if you would join me reading in unison some of John Wesley's words. And John Wesley was the founder of the Methodist movement, which is what is expressed in the United Methodist Church. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. Thanks be to God for all of our blessings. Our sermon this morning comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 1. If you look at the church around me, you see that it's dark. There aren't any lights on. The only light in here is what's coming through the windows, which are shuttered and closed. Darkness is a little scary for us, isn't it? When we were children, we may have been afraid of the darkness, and our parents in loving ways showed us that the closet didn't have anything in it. You may still have fears of the darkness. You know, when you get out of the car and see the shadows, and so you kind of run toward the house, or you get the willies going in the house and you start flipping on lights and saying, hello, hello? One time, a long time ago now, my family and I visited Mammoth Cave. And in Mammoth Cave, you can go where it is utter and complete darkness. And when people got into that darkness, if they stayed for very long, they went mad. Their human minds couldn't stand pure darkness, darkness that their eyes couldn't see anything. In fact, we sang happy birthday to my oldest daughter on her 16th birthday, 356 feet below the surface of the earth in the utter and complete darkness. That was fun. But that was darkness that we knew would end, darkness that we had control over. The darkness in the world around us is different, isn't it? Right now, we feel very much like we're living in a time of great darkness. No matter what you think, you have to look out at the world and see that there are many, many people who don't see light the same way you do. We look at our country and we see the pain of people who are sick and the pain of people who are dying and the pain of people who are struggling to breathe. And then we look to our leaders and they can't seem to all agree on how to help us and how to help the country. And in fact, we now look at them and wonder if anyone has our best interests at heart. We go out in the community and we find ourselves either afraid or annoyed, one or the other, but it feels like the darkness has creeped in and we wanna know where the light went. In fact, I stand here in the sanctuary with the lights off and the building closed, and we find ourselves looking at that and thinking, how did the darkness take even worship away from us? The darkness seems so thick and so impenetrable. Maybe you've seen a dark cloud descend over your life. You went into the doctor's appointment not very concerned, but when you were in there, the doctor said, well, I believe that you have cancer, or your child, it looks like they have leukemia, or your mother's heart is failing. And when those words are said, the darkness descends and it descends completely. Maybe it was something else. 
Maybe it's a battle with an addiction. Maybe it's a child or a parent that has brought darkness to your life and that is all you can see is the darkness. It's as though someone has taken a deep dark veil and put it over your eyes and your heart. Now, when you first go into the shadows, you cry. When you find yourself in the deepest darkness, you don't seem to cry anymore. It's like, it's just all too much. But we read in John, not the most popular Christmas story. You know, we like those Christmas stories that have angels and shepherds and children in bathrobes. And so we use Matthew and Luke. Mark doesn't have a birth story. We use Matthew and Luke for our stories and for our Christmas narratives. But here we are still in the Christmas season and we have forgotten the Gospel of John. And the Gospel of John tells us a completely different birth narrative. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not overcome it. The light, the light of Christ shines in the darkness, the darkness of this world, the darkness of sin, the darkness of pain, the darkness of suffering and death. The light of Christ shines into that darkness and the darkness cannot will not overcome it. That light of Christ is a light that is too much for whatever darkness we may know. If, if you are walking through the valleys of the shadows and the darkness of health and illness, of really ugly diagnoses, of that fear about mortality, the light of Christ shines into your darkness. It shines into your darkness, whether you can perceive it or not. The light of Christ is there with you. If you are struggling with addictions, with alcoholism or drug addictions, if you're struggling with any kind of addiction and you feel like the darkness is just too much, the light of, excuse me, the light of Christ shines into your darkness. If you are in the darkness of mental illness and suicidal ideation, if you feel like there's no hope or place for you in the world, your time is gone. That is a darkness of sin, a darkness of this world, and the light of Christ shines into your darkness. In God's kingdom, we are all valued and all have a place. And no matter where you find yourself or what you're dealing with, the light of Christ shines into your darkness. You are a beloved child of God. Come on into the light, into the light of Christ. It's not gonna be on the news tonight. They won't be talking about light. They'll be talking about darkness. It's not gonna be the conversation out in the neighborhood. It's not gonna be the conversation much of anywhere right now, but it is a conversation we should have here in the church, here around the light of Christ. You can't be in darkness completely. There will be a candle lighted and the candle is the light of Christ.
I know what it is to feel despair. I know what it is to look and think I just can't deal with more. I know what it is to be disappointed that holidays and gatherings didn't turn out like they were supposed to and disappointment has reigned and then you wonder if how are things ever going to get better and it just feels the shroud of darkness settling in. Maybe you just don't feel good anymore. You've had one health problem after the other, one disappointment, one setback right after the other. Maybe you're in the darkness of unemployment, of debt, of overspending and under earning or however you want to look at it. All of those things make darkness, but that is not the final word. The final word is on Christmas, the light came into the darkness and the darkness will not overcome it. Join me in prayer. Gracious God, we bring to you our darkness. We bring to you the darkness of this world, the darkness that has creeped into our souls and our minds. We bring to you the darkness that we see some of our family and friends standing in. We bring to you all of the shadowy places and we ask now that you would help us to see your precious light. We invite your light, the light of Christ, into our lives, into our hearts, into our homes. Help us to see and to know your light, your beautiful, precious light, to see it in the places we once thought were dark. Amen. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This little light of mine came from Jesus, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. In all places of darkness and shadows, let the light of Jesus shine in your life. So we'll now um, share together in John Wesley's covenant service. It's an appropriate thing to do here at the beginning of the year to set our hearts right and align our promises and goals for the year with what God would have us do. Um, these are Mr. Wesley's words that have been um, paraphrased and condensed just a bit. Please open your bulletin so that you can read the part of the people along with me. Commit yourselves to Christ as his servants. Give yourselves to him that you may belong to him. Christ has many services to be done. Some are easy, some more difficult. In some ways, we may please Christ and please ourselves. But then there are other works where we cannot please Christ except by denying ourselves. It is necessary, therefore, that we consider what it means to be a servant of Christ. Let us, therefore, go to Christ in prayer. Please join me. Let me be your servant under your command. I will no longer be my own. I will give up myself to your will in all things. Be satisfied that Christ shall give you your place and work. Lord, make me what you will. I put myself fully into your hands. Put me to doing, put me to suffering, 
Let me be employed for you or laid aside for you. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and with a willing heart give it all to your pleasure and disposal. Confirm this by a holy covenant. First, set apart some time each day to be spent alone before the Lord, seeking God and admitting your sins. Second, be serious and in a spirit of holy awe and reverence. Third, rely on God's promise of giving grace and strength. Fourth, resolve to be faithful. You have given your heart to the Lord and you have dedicated yourself to God. With God's power, never go back. Last, be prepared to renew this covenant with the Lord. Let us bow before the Lord in prayer. O righteous God, see me as I bow down before you. Forgive my unfaithfulness and not having done your will, for you have promised mercy to me if I turn to you with my whole heart. I renounce any idols that have turned my love from you. Before all heaven and earth, I acknowledge you as my Lord and God. I take you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as my life and vow to give up myself, body, and soul as your servant, to serve you in holiness and righteousness all the days of my life. This is my covenant that I have made with you, my God. Amen. Because of God's covenant with us, he sent his son as a substitute for the punishment we deserve for our sin. Christ's suffering and death paid the price for what we fully deserve. God's abundant grace and mercy has shown a way for our redemption. We remember with gratitude Christ's sacrifice, and we give thanks. All honor and glory to you, Almighty God. Amen. If you would like to give an offering to Enon, you may go to www.enonumc.org, click on the giving tab and make your offering. You can also drop it off here at Enon Church or put it in the mail. To do your offering, you need to be giving and giving out to the world. We, we offer God back 10% of what we have received and all that we have is a gift from God. Let us thank God for the gifts of our lives. Gracious God, we thank you for all that we, we have and all that we are as a gift from your hands. And we thank you for the privilege of returning our tithes and offerings to you. And now we pray as your son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Go forward this week knowing that you are blessed and beloved of God, and no matter how dark the world may seem, the light of Christ has, will, and will always overcome the darkness. Amen. Please join me in our closing hymn, the hymn of promise. In the bulb there is a flower, in the seed an apple tree, in cocoons the hidden promise, butterflies will soon be free. In the cold and snow of winter, there's a spring that waits to be unrevealed until its season. 
something God alone can see. There's a song in every silence, seeking word and melody. There's a dawn in every darkness, bringing hope to you and me. From the past will come the future, what it holds a mystery unrevealed until it sees on something God alone can see. In our end is our beginning, in our time infinity, in our doubt there is believing, in our life eternity. In our death, the resurrection, what it holds, a victory, unrevealed until it sees on something God alone can see. God can see 2021, just as God saw 2020. There is no place you will go that God is not waiting for you. Do all the good you can, by all the means you can, and all the ways you can, and all the places you can, at all the times you can, to all the people you can, as long as ever you can. Amen. Our benediction and blessing from John Wesley, our founder and theologian. Have a happy new year.